Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak FX, the place where I teach you all the tips and techniques for creating your very own animations and video effects. Now in this video, we're gonna continue on with our Star Wars theme series, and I'm gonna be showing you how to make this Death Star. Now I make weekly tips and tricks videos just like this one, so if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out. Now before we get started, I recommend checking out our little Star Wars fan film, and I've linked to that in the description below. Now I've also added a slider at the bottom of this video, and you can use this if you wanna skip ahead to a different part of the tutorial. Now if you're doing this for your own video, you may find there's actually a lot more techniques than you may actually need to follow. So that's why I'd recommend using the slider below just to skip the parts that don't apply. Now all the files you need to follow along with this tutorial are also available to download for free via a link below. Now it's also very important when you're shooting your own footage that you follow a few steps just to make this process easier. The first is I recommend shooting on a tripod and not moving the camera so that you don't have to worry too much about motion tracking. Now the other thing you'll notice about this shot is that we haven't just taken a clean shot of the sky, we've actually got some trees in the foreground here. And this really helps because it not only helps make the effect look better, it also makes it easier to track your image or model into the sky if your camera moves. So just keep those in mind when you're actually filming. And the last tip here is actually to make sure that your actors or your foreground elements don't cover up your image too much. If they do, you'll have to do a bit of rotoscoping to actually remove them and separate them out of your shot. Now, this is not going to be a 3D tutorial on how to actually make the Death Star. We're going to be using an image of the Death Star and compositing it into our sky to make it look like it's there. So the first thing I want to do is actually want to take this Death Star video that you can download, and I'm going to right click and create a new comp from selection. So the next thing to do is to drag our image of our Death Star into our shot here and position this how we want. So I'm gonna scale mine up to sit about there. I'm just gonna drop the opacity down to about 80% so I can see what I'm doing here. So this is the main part we're gonna actually see in the middle here, but this is the sort of size and position. Next, I'm gonna take my pen tool and I simply just wanna draw a very rough mask that runs around the outside of my image here. Now all this is doing is just a really rough mask just to help position it where we need it to be. Next, we want to actually put this layer in behind these trees, but in front of the sky. Now we do this by creating what's called a sky mat, and we can create one by taking our background layer, coming up to edit and duplicating, and dragging this to the top. Then I'm gonna come up to effect, down to color correction and add the hue and saturation, and I'm going to drag the saturation all the way down. I'm also gonna come back up to effect down to color correction and add the levels. Now here, what we're actually gonna do is drag this bottom slider up, and we're also gonna drag this top slider down. And all we're doing here, we're simply creating what's called a mat, where the black part we won't be able to see through, and the white part will be transparent. Then what I do is I take my Death Star image, and I come down to the track mat settings. If yours isn't there, just right click, go to columns and make sure modes is selected and then go down to Luma mat. And then you can see it's automatically created a mat to mask it through those trees. Now at the moment it doesn't look perfect and that's okay because once we actually start messing around with the Death Star image, that will actually start to disappear. But you can always come back to those settings and readjust those if you need more or less. So now we're actually in a position where we can actually start to adjust the colors on our Death Star to make it match a bit better to our background. So the first thing I want to add is come up to effect down to color correction, and I'm simply going to add the curves. Now at the moment, this top part is quite light and this bottom part's quite dark. So I wanna just even that out just to start with. So I'm just gonna drag down on these curves here to help take off that edge. And the other thing I'm going to do is actually go down to my blue. And I also want to put a little bit of blue into that image to help match to the blue tone of my sky. Now again, we can come back and readjust these in a minute, but the next part is I'm also going to add a hue and saturation slider, and I'm going to bring this lightness 
up to somewhere around there that better matches my background. So it's all about just trying to blend this image into our background. And the last part is I'm gonna come up to effect down to color correction and I can add the Lumetric color. And this is where I can just add a little bit of warmth back into that image just to help match it to that background more. So it's really just about going back through these and just tweaking them to help it better match into our background. Now at the moment that's looking pretty good, but the next issue we've got is it's not actually stuck into our shot. It just doesn't look believable. So we need to actually do some motion tracking. Now, if you're using an earlier version of After Effects like CS6, you just wanna come up to Window and down to Tracker, and then you can actually use the Track Motion function to actually select a point on this branch and then track that, and then track that to a null, which then you can parent to that layer. But an even easier option that I find is actually coming up to Animation and using the built-in Mocker to actually track it. Now I'm using the new version of Mocker here, but the old version works exactly the same. And all I need to do is just come up to the spline tool and we're going to create a quick spline, which sort of runs to something like that. Now I just wanna make sure that all of these have selected here and I'm roughly using around 90% pixels. Once we've actually done that, all I need to do is to start the track forwards and then backwards. Now, the reason I actually like and prefer using Mocha is that for this beginning part, you can see the tree actually goes out of focus and Mocha is really good at tracking things when they go out of focus. Now, for those of you using an older version of Mocha, you can just come down here and actually there'll be a setting to export the tracking data. In the newer version, all we're going to do is just save that project, come back to after Effects, now I want to export that tracking data. Now this only applies for Mocha AECC, which is the latest version of the free plugin of Mocha. If you're using an older version, you can just export that tracking data and paste it onto a new null. But here I'm gonna create a new null object. I'm going to create the tracking data of that layer that we just tracked. I can then export that transform data to that null layer and apply that export. Now we have that null, which is actually stuck in place. Then I can actually parent that Death Star image to that null. And the other thing I want to do is actually come down to that null and I don't wanna use the scale or rotation. I just wanna use the position information here. Now that may vary depending on how much movement's actually in your shot. So that's why we actually recorded that information at the beginning. But in this case, I'm just gonna use the position data. So at the moment, that's looking pretty good. But the next issue you can see is the camera is actually pulling focus from the foreground to the distance. And we need to replicate this in our Death Star image. So what we can actually do is select our image here and come up to effect down to blur and sharpen and we're going to add the Gaussian blur. Then I'm gonna to go to the start and I want to actually drag this up to try and replicate as best I can that blur of the camera. And I'm gonna set a keyframe there. Then I'm going to move across to where I feel it actually pulls focus to and maybe drop this down. Now I'm actually not gonna drop it all the way down to zero because it's in the distance. I want it to have a little bit of a blur to it. So maybe down around two, something around there. And you can see we've actually got that focus pulling nicely. The other thing you'll notice is that when the camera is actually pulling focus, it's actually changing the perspective very slightly on the distance. So we need to try and replicate that using a very slight scale on this layer. So I select that layer, I hit S on the keyboard to bring up the scale properties and create a scale keyframe there. And then I'm going to create another scale keyframe about there from where it actually changes focus. And at the start here, I'm just gonna slightly increase that to maybe something around there. So we've replicated that focus blur as best we can. So there you go, guys. That's how you create the Death Star effect in After Effects. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more great After Effects tutorials over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.